Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to another video where we take a look at some of the tricks that you might want to try when programming sounds for the wonderful Korg monologue. So this video is concerned with the envelope generator and the LFO sections. And what's slightly weird about the trick that I'm going to be showing you is that it's actually documented in the manual. But because of the ergonomics of it and also the slight change in um, maybe thought process, uh, it might be that you've never even tried this. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at it. So uh, let's start by talking about the um, envelope generator section. So the envelope section can be sent to uh, one of three places, the overall pitch, the pitch of oscillator 2, or the cutoff frequency. We'll just go to the overall pitch because it's the easiest to hear. So what the envelope generator does by default is it's going to add to whatever the current value is. So to put it another way, it's going to raise the pitch by whatever we set the int intensity knob to. It's going to take attack amount of time to get up to this new value. And then it's going to use decay amount of time to fall back down to the original value. So if we set intensity to zero, then we don't hear any movement in the pitch. But if we turn it up, we're going to go up to a new pitch and then fall back down to our original pitch. So perhaps we want to get there sooner. We can turn our attack time down, and that means we're going to reach this new pitch quicker. Yeah, we jumped up there very, very quickly. Or if we wanted to fall back down uh, to our original pitch faster, we can turn our decay knob down, for example. Like so. But the key thing to notice here is that this is always an additive uh, function. We're always adding to whatever the current value is and falling back down. And that goes for pitch two and, and cut off as well. However, if you hold down shift while you move the intensity knob, this function becomes a subtractive one instead. So rather than going up to a new pitch and falling back down, we fall down to a new pitch and then spring back up to our original pitch instead. So let's have a listen to that. Holding down shift while I change the intensity knob. It's sometimes what's referred to as an inverted envelope. And it's quite a useful little feature and allows you to do certain sound design tricks that you might not be able to achieve in other ways. So let's move over to sending our envelope generator to the cutoff frequency instead. And let's think about a common thing that we find ourselves doing when we're building patches. So one of the things that um, you almost inevitably do when you're sending the envelope generator to the cutoff is to try and achieve this sort of sound. So what we're doing here is we're starting with a very low cutoff. So we're shutting our filter down quite a lot. We are jumping up to a much higher point. So opening our filter up very quickly. And then we're falling down however we really fancy. We can do it faster if you like. And you might not want to jump up quite as quickly. If you want a more brassy sound, you might open up that attack a little bit. And why do we do this? Well, it's because we're approximating what an acoustic instrument would do in many cases. If you think about plucking a guitar string, that first initial pluck, full of harmonics, very, very bright sounding. But then as the guitar string decays, all of that top end starts to fall away and you end up moving towards just really having the fundamental frequency ringing out. So we do this because of that reason, it approximates the behavior of an acoustic instrument. But why should we? Why should we be concerned with what an acoustic instrument does? We're using a synthesizer, we can do whatever we want. But let's start by thinking how we might approximate that same idea, but by using an inverted envelope. So we're gonna to wanna to start high, because when we set our intensity here, that's gonna subtract from our currently high open uh, filter. 
we're going to want to set our attack a little bit longer because this essentially is a, the amount of time it's going to take to decay <laughs> to decay down. It's kind of analogous to our decay knob before because this is the amount of time it's going to take to get to this low value. So let's have a listen. Okay, so that sounds kind of like what we had before, but what happens if I hold down the note for a little bit longer? We rubber band back to that more bright and open sound. Now, acoustic instruments don't do that. I don't care. I think that's a really cool sound, especially when you start to introduce uh, a more rich uh, source. So if I bring in uh, the second VCO. It almost has the effect of uh, guitar feedback, the fact that something swells back up after that initial decay has happened. It's a really great sound. And you do similar things with the um, pitch too, if you want to set your second oscillator onto sync. That kind of rubber banding that happens. Uh, it is really, really um, great, really, really interesting. You can use it in lots of different ways. Now, it won't have escaped your notice that the um, LFO also has an intensity knob as well. So the question is, can we do something similar there? And the answer you'll be happy to hear is yes. Let's just get back to a, uh, let's just initialize that patch. Okay, so, um, We'll do it with pitch to begin with as well, because that's the easiest one to hear. So if we set our intensity a little bit, and um, we'll go with the triangle wave. Okay, that's, uh, that's great. So let's invert that by holding down shift while we move intensity. Huh. It sounds pretty much the same. And actually we'll find exactly the same ha thing happens on the square wave as well. So this is uh, not inverted. And then this is holding down shift and inverting it. Sonically that's basically the same. And the reason for that is that um, all of the LFO shapes here are bipolar. Which is to say they both go up and down by the same amount. So if we hear... The extremes of the square wave are both higher and lower than our original pitch. And the same goes for the triangle wave. So for all intents and purposes, um, because they are bipolar and symmetrical, there's no real point using the inverted um, intensity on those two waveforms. Now that just leaves us with our final LFO waveform, the sawtooth wave. Now the sawtooth wave, when it's running forwards, jumps up very quickly to its highest point and then decays quite slowly towards its lowest point and jumps up very quickly and so on which gives us our laser gun sound. However, this one is not symmetrical. So if we invert it, we get a UFO sound instead. So the inverted LFO is actually really, really interesting on the sawtooth wave. Now I really like this when it's sent to the cutoff, so I'll just run my cutoff down a bit. So if we uh, run it forwards, get 
our sort of bouncing ball sound. Okay, now if we run that backwards by holding down the shift while we change the intensity, a very different sound. Um, so, on your LFOs, you can pretty much ignore the inversion on the square wave and the triangle wave, but when it gets to the sawtooth wave, you can completely change the character of the sound, whether the sawtooth wave is going forwards or backwards. And I highly recommend that you ever play with it, because um, it, it can lead to some really, really cool sounds. So uh, I hope that was uh, helpful. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope that spurred you on to try uh, holding down the shift knob while you move those intensity knobs because it can lead to some great sounds. Uh, please, if you enjoy the video, hit that like button and also click on that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos on the monologue and various other synthesis stuff that we've been looking at on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you again real soon.